cardiac tamponade is the uh, topic. And um, cardiac tamponade is an emergency situation that can occur. And what I'm going to do is try to illustrate this in a very simple diagram. And we all know that the heart doesn't look like this, but that's okay. Uh, for diagram purposes, it's, it's good to draw it in a way that people can understand. So let's label this. This is left ventricle, uh, left atrium, right ventricle, right atrium. These are the veins that bring blood back to the heart, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, and then the blood comes out through the aorta. Outside the heart is a uh, layer called the pericardium. And the pericardium normally does have some fluid in it. Now what happens in pericardial tamponade is you have an accumulation of blood inside this pericardial uh, space. And what happens is eventually this blood can expand and then can start to compress the uh, ventricles like that. So basically they make the ventricular volume smaller. So as you can see, the, the chambers are getting smaller because of this fluid buildup. Now that is very worrisome uh, because that can cause three major things that um, can be detected when a patient comes in. And those three things are collectively known as Beck's triad. And instead of memorizing Beck's triad, it's very important to understand what the three components are. I'll write them here and then I'll explain why each of these happen. So the first one is hypotension, low blood pressure. The second is the heart sounds will be distant or muffled. And then the last, the third one is that you'll have jugular venous distension. What that means is that the neck veins, veins will be distended. So I'll explain why each of these happen. Okay, so the first one, hypotension, why does that happen? Well, let's uh, make this even more dramatic. Uh, the more I exaggerate this, I think the easier it is to understand. So let's say you've got a severe tamponade that is just completely compressed. Look at how much smaller the, the left ventricle has become. Now, because of this, the heart can't properly expand to fill this left ventricle. Normally, you know, the left ventricle fills with blood, and then the blood is pumped out through the aorta. Well, usually uh, everything's fine because the left ventricle can expand and um, can then pump the blood out. But in tamponade, you actually have a left ventricle that's getting smaller from every end. It even gets smaller from this side, if I draw it like that. I'm just trying to make it exaggerated so you can understand. So look at the left ventricle now, it's gotten smaller. So because the left ventricle has gotten smaller due to this fluid, the blood buildup in the pericardium, that reduces the stroke volume. So the blood that the heart beats out with each beat has been reduced. Now stroke volume is directly tied to cardiac output. In fact, if you remember, the equation cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate. So if stroke volume goes down, so does the cardiac output. So when the cardiac output goes down, less blood is basically being pumped into the aorta, less blood is pumped out into the circulation. That means the pressure of the blood in the circulation is lower, and that's why you get low blood pressure. The second one, heart sounds, why are heart, heart sounds distant or muffled? Well, the reason is just very straightforwardly because the fluid around the heart, all this excess blood that's around the heart is making it difficult for you to your ears to hear the heart sound that you normally hear when you put the stethoscope on a patient's chest. So that's, that's just why the heart sounds are distant. The last one, jugular venous distension, why does that happen? All this uh, blood that's built up in the pericardium uh, is essentially making the um, atrium, right atrium and right ventricle smaller. What that does is it causes fluid to back up into the veins and when that happens these veins get distended. 
So that's why. So remember, Beck's triad, don't just memorize it. Understand why this is happening, and it'll make sense to you. So diagnosis, diagnosis is very straightforward. Without a doubt, if somebody has any type of uh, history and presentation uh, that's uh, suspicious for cardiac tamponade, uh, do an echocardiogram. And other than Beck's triad, the history will most likely be some sort of trauma because you have to, um, it has to be pretty severe for somebody to develop blood in the pericardial space, um, in the pericardial sac. There has to be some significant trauma, usually like a stab wound. Someone's been stabbed, you know, some sort of a attack of some kind with a knife or usually is the reason. And then treatment, what you have to do is you have to insert a needle and you have to aspirate. You have to basically take the fluid out. And that procedure is known as a pericardiocentesis. And uh, you insert the needle and then you withdraw the, uh, the blood and the fluid out of the pericardial sac. So let's take a look at some clinical vignettes and see what this looks like in a patient presentation. 42-year-old man is brought to the emergency department after being stabbed in the chest with a knife at a local bar. Pa witness says that the patient was attacked with a knife from behind and suffered multiple kicks to the abdomen. Stab wound was with an unknown type of blade to the right chest. Patient's past medical history is unknown. Patient's allergies are unknown. Patient ate three hours ago. On initial presentation, there are large patches of dried blood on the shirt and face, and his lips are covered with dried blood. He's diaphoretic but speaking in full sentences. He has multiple stab wounds on the right chest, both inferior and superior to the right nipple. Chest tube is inserted on the right with drainage of about 1,200 cc's of blood. A diagnostic peritoneal lavage is negative for any blood. His blood pressure is low. Physical exam shows jugular venous pulsations visible at 14 centimeters. Heart sounds are distant and barely audible. The lungs are clear bilaterally and the patient has a tender left upper quadrant most likely cause for this patient's hypotension is. Well, you've got Beck's triad uh, in this question, which are hypotension, which is written right here, the blood pressures are low, and then you've got the second part of Beck's triad, which is the distant heart sounds, which is right here, distant heart sounds, and then the third part, uh, which is the jugular venous distension, which is presented right there. JVD. So don't just memorize it. Go back to the diagram and understand why um, each of these happen. And of course we are talking about cardiac tamponade and sometimes referred to as pericardial tamponade because the blood is in the pericardial sac. Next question. 57 year old woman with asthma, hypertension, and metastatic breast carcinoma is brought to the emergency department because of difficulty breathing, lethargy, and palpitations. She had been complaining to her husband of increasing shortness of breath over the last days. She recently finished her fifth round of chemotherapy last month and underwent radiation. Blood pressure is 75 over 40, pulse is 128, oxygen saturation is 93 on room air, minimally responsive to commands, heart sounds are faint but audible. She has mild bilateral rails with occasional wheezes, and her jugular venous pressure is approximately 15 on physical exam. Chest x-ray shows multiple lung nodules and enlarged cardiac silhouette. Electrocardiogram shows sinus tachycardia, low voltage QRX complexes. Most appropriate next step in management is. Well, let's see if she's got Beck's triad. First one is low blood pressure, which indeed she does. Uh, next one would be muffled heart sounds, and she does heart sounds are faint, so that's good enough. And the last one would be uh, the fact that she would have some sort of jugular venous distension, and she does. Jugular venous pressure is quite high. So she's got cardiac tamponade, and they're asking, what's the next step? Well, the next step, um, I guess, just to make the diag diagnosis uh, certain, is you do a bedside echocardiogram. So that's the diagnosis. That, that's all that they're really asking for in this question. And then finally, last one. In the course of a robbery, a young woman is stabbed repeatedly 
On arrival at the emergency department, she is shivering and asks for a blanket and a drink of water. She is noted to be pale and perspiring. Blood pressure 72 or 50, pulses 130. Her neck and forehead veins are large and distended. A quick initial survey reveals entry wounds in her chest and upper abdomen. She has bilateral breast sounds and a scaphoid non-tender abdomen. IV infusions of rigorous lactate are started. Her systolic blood pressure drops further to 40. No distal pulses can be felt, and she loses consciousness. Her central venous pressure at that time is 28. What is the, which of the following is the most appropriate next step? Well, again, um, she's got the low blood pressure, hypotension. She's got the neck vein distension right there. And there's no doubt because of the history of being stabbed, she most likely probably has a cardiac tamponade. And in this kind of situation, you need to do an immediate treatment which involves a pericardiocentesis, which basically means that you have to insert a, a needle and withdraw the fluid that's causing uh, all this problem. And that would be choice D, uh, which essentially is talking about evacuation of the pericardial sac. So that would be the correct answer.